Welcome to this video tutorial on the topic of Connect Software 5.2 and the workflow for Atlantis superstructures. In this video, we will go step by step through the process from setting up the case in the administration phase to either exporting the data from the model phase or the model data transmission to your partner lab via the Connect Case Center. We are currently in the administration phase and switch to the bridge indication for this workflow. First, we determine the position of the implants in the odontogram. Therefore, we enable the implant option and then tap the implant positions in the odontogram. The next step in the step menu, select scan body type is marked with an asterisk since this is a mandatory step. You can now determine the pontics or, as in our case, switch to the next step. A window opens from where you select the implant manufacturer, then the implant platform, and last, the scan body to be used. In the case of Atlantis superstructures, an IO flow S must be used. Depending on the implant manufacturer and implant platform, the correct IO Flow S scan body is automatically displayed. Next, we make the same selection for the remaining three implant positions. Since we still need to define the pontics, we go back to the Define Restoration step and enable the Pontic option. Just like before, we mark the pontic positions in the odontogram. And are now able to confirm our upper jaw selection by tapping OK. We skip the lower jaw workflow and you will next see the final case details before we move to the next phase. For the upper jaw, an Atlantis superstructure on four implants is planned, for the lower jaw on two implants. By tapping Next, we get to the acquisition phase. For this workflow, five image catalogs are automatically displayed. These are mandatory catalogs. In our case, we will add two further catalogs. From the page palette, we open the Add Catalog function and enable the options Gingiva Mask Lower and Upper. These catalogs are optional image catalogs. Since this video is focused on the workflow, we skip the scan process of the individual catalogs. Nevertheless, we will briefly describe the corresponding scan strategy using a sketch. The starting point is incisal and we tilt the scanner by approximately 60 degrees in oral direction. Then we scan in one of the two directions, from incisal to distal. We start again incisal, tilt the scanner again approximately by 60 degrees in oral direction and scan the other side. When we have reached the most distal position, we perform an occlusal scan up to the end of the opposing quadrant. Finally. We tilt the scanner by approximately 60 degrees in buckle direction and scan again up to the end of the opposing quadrant. In case of missing sufficient gingiva structure or heavy salivation respectively bleeding, the intraoral scan cannot be performed. A scan video and further details are included in our video tutorial with the topic of Scan Strategy in Case of an Indentulous Jaw. Back in our example, we focus on the upper jaw and briefly click through the respective scanned image catalogs. The upper jaw has been scanned, including the tooth setup. We proceed with the gingiva mask upper image catalog and see the already matched scan which was indicated by the green check mark as well as the transparent inserted tooth setup. The same applies to the scan body upper image catalog. Regarding the scan process for scan body image catalogs, we have some more helpful tips for you. Always start the scan at the gingiva at the transition to the IO Flow S and not directly at the scan body. 
After the jaw has been scanned, scan all areas around each IO flow S in order to capture the complete surface. The most important area is the top plane of the scan body, which must be scanned completely. In case of scan interruption, make sure to always start again in an area that was already scanned before, such as at the gingiva with distinctive geometry, and never directly at the scan body. The acquisition of the scan bodies require a high degree of precision and attention, since this scan is of importance for the correct fit of the superstructure. We now switch to the model phase so that the virtual models can be calculated. At this point, you have the option to export the open STL dataset to an external storage medium. For this purpose, we open the System menu and tap Export. You can change the file name and select the storage location before defining the desired export format. We select the STL Files option with the highest resolution. This file type can now be transmitted to your partner lab. By tapping Export, the process is started and you will receive a separate STL file for each image catalog. In our case, we will transmit the data via the Connect Case Center and therefore click Cancel. Back in the model phase, we skip checking the virtual models and switch directly to the last phase, the Connect phase. At this point, please make sure that a secure Internet connection has been established since now you will automatically be connected with your Connect Case Center. In case you have not yet created a customer account in the Connect Case Center, select Sign Up for Connect Case Center. Since we have already registered, we simply enter our password and log in. At the bottom of the screen, the upload status is displayed. In this step, the restoration data can be reviewed once again and we proceed with the Enter Order Data step. Atlantis superstructures can only be ordered from your partner lab. Depending on the partner lab, this step can look different since the order information can be modified by the lab. All fields marked with an asterisk are mandatory fields which we will quickly complete. In the meantime, the case data have been successfully uploaded so that now we can transmit the case to the lab by clicking Submit Cart. The state shows that the case has been ordered. Thank you very much for your attention. We would like to wish you every success when working with Connect.